The following interview was conducted with Kumari Sinha, the Edgar and Hedwig Olson Distinguished Professor of Civil Engineering for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Wednesday, April 11, 2011 in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, uh, Professor Merritt of Library Science. This is part two of the interview. Good morning, Professor Sinha. Good morning. We'll start a little bit with the Joint Transportation Research Program. Okay. Uh, <coughs> This, uh, this is a, a program that started in 1937, uh, uh, long before, well, two years before, several years before I was born. And uh, uh, it, it's a, a tradition at uh, Purdue Engineering School uh, uh, that uh, um, this program allows Purdue Civil Engineering to work with the Indiana, started with the Indiana State Highway Commission, then became Department of Highways, uh, Department of Transportation and eventually uh, to work on research programs as a cooperative activity. That means both Purdue and uh, civil engineering faculty and uh, Indiana DOT personnel will work together to find solutions uh, that will uh, help uh, Department of Transportation to make things better, save money, save life, etc. And a very, uh, it started as a joint highway research project. It stayed like that ever since I came to Purdue in 1974. I have been working with them. Harold Michael was the associate director. Traditionally, the head of the school used to be the director. And that's the way it continued for a long time. And, uh, but the associate director used to do most of the work. So uh, after Harold Michael became school head, he became director in 1978. Then 1991, Harold retired, and then he did not have any associate director, although I worked with him very closely, basically, you know, I was, but I was not, I uh, didn't have a title of associate director. And uh, then uh, uh, Vince Renovich became school head, he was uh, director, and I was appointed in 1991, he came in. So about four years, I was associate director. Vince appointed me associate director. Then 95, I was the first non-head director of the, of the uh, program. And I changed the title from Joint Highway Research Project to Joint Transportation Research Program to be in tune with the mission of the, uh, the agency it is no, no more highway, but all modes of transportation. So we within Indiana. Within Indiana, okay. and uh, and it's a, a fairly good program. We uh, for uh, between four to five million dollars per year, and every penny we get, we could spend because we did not give any. We did not have any overhead. Uh, Purdue did not have any overhead. That's an agreement that started in 1937. The program is still active. It is still working uh, very well. We have expanded not just civil engineering but also other engineering schools and management school and also some of the uh, departments that like political science and uh, et cetera work with us. And I stepped down in 2010 uh, uh, as the director but I'm still involved as a researcher. Sure with the program, it does a lot of activities. It's very well known in the country, in the world as a whole, and many people uh, have worked as a graduate student, have gone to become bigger and better things in, in life and in their school, mm -hmm. in their uh, countries, including the minister, uh, the prime minister in Egypt, and the um, deputy minister in Taiwan, and the uh, uh, vice, vice prime, or uh, deputy prime minister in, in uh, Thailand, oh, we have lots of people who have gone through. Who benefit by being part Benefit of this, by this, pro right. this particular program. The funding, where does the funding come Funding from? comes from Indiana Department of Transportation. Okay. In DOT. In DOT, but uh, a big part of the funding comes from Federal Highway Administration. Okay. Federal money, which is allocated to Indi it the way it is now, it didn't start that way. It was entirely Department of Transportation or State Highway Commission. But 1967, it started to change because then we had a federal Department of Transportation, federal highway was created. It didn't. It was not that way before. It was Bulo Public Roads under inter, uh, internal uh, or interior department, mm -hmm. then Department of Commerce. Uh, 
So then uh, it, it became then, so we restructured. The law requires now that uh, one and a half percent of the money that we spend in construction must go for research or research and planning. And 25% of that money must go to research. So in, in NIDOT does, give, uh, you know, like every other uh, um, uh, states, they do with their state schools, like Berkeley, California, um, Illinois, DOT, they all do the same way right. like we do. But we were long before this uh, recent events, so we started, Indiana started this kind of activity, cooperative program, long before any of the other right. states. So we are a model program. Right. Okay. And uh, 1937, long before. Uh -huh. So it has worked very well. It's sure. um, always. And so, still going. Hmm? Still it goes. Going. It's still going. And um, you know, uh, right now, the, the commissioner of the Department of Transportation in Indiana, he, he was my student. <laughs> so it, 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 Your uh, people have really gone on. Uh, yeah, we have right. several of our students are in the leadership positions there. And it has gone, you know, Purdue being the engineering school sure. in the state. Sure. So right. the leadership always has been in the Purdue. So uh, although we do not expect any favoritism, and we try to get other, like Indiana University, um, um, uh, Notre Dame, Valparaiso, we try to bring them in uh, working with us. It's an enlightened self-interest because uh, who knows, the legislature may, who knows what may happen. Right. And this right. program we have is, is a state law. State statute. Okay. okay. That's a 1936 statute. So be, be, it cannot be uh, just state taken away. Sure. Uh, the state legislature has to okay. uh, decide. Okay. Now so, the transportation infrastructure yeah. system had, had so there. So at, at Purdue Civil Engineering, we have different disciplines that are structured in the areas. When I came at uh, 1974, Harold Michael was the head of our used to be called transportation area. It, it's a long history it has, and uh, uh, now our school is a very big in transportation area, has been for oh, 50, 60 years because of this joint highway research program. Although this program just doesn't do any transportation operations or traffic engine, also does bridges, pavements, materials, and you know, structure, geotechnical, all those we do, environmental, uh, but just because the transportation is the, in the title, so we, we, we have a lot of visibility within the school and also outside Purdue. When people think of Purdue, they think we are a you know, par excellence uh, program in transportation area. So I, I worked with Harold Michael uh, for a long time, so ever since I came, 74. Then Harold became head of the school in 78. Uh, that, uh, following that, he, uh, Ellen Yoder was a senior man, so I suggested to Harold that he should be the area head. That's the way it was. Although I worked with, um, you know, I, because I was young and eager and a lot of energy, so I really look after the program. Then I went on a sabbatical in 1980, uh, fall of 80. I went to MIT, and uh, then I went to, that's the only time I took sabbatical. So two semesters I had. One semester I spent at MIT, other uh, semester I spent in India, which is now Indian Institute of Technology in Roorkee. And the reason I went to, uh, did that, I had to optimize my time because I was from India and I, my mother was uh, getting old, so I wanted my children, my five children, to have some company with my mother. So I spent five months in India and five months in, uh, at uh, Boston. And it worked out very well. It was uh, very, very well. And that's the only time I took sabbatical in my 38 years at Purdue. Mm -hmm. I never took sabbatical before or after then. <laughs> and uh, so I've been at Purdue all my time. Uh, and it was very good. At MIT, I taught a course. And uh, I was a visiting professor. It was an institute appointment. I was not just a visiting scholar. Or I, was a, I had a faculty appointment. Uh, even though I was only one for a, one semester, mm -hmm. and I taught a course, as I said, and uh, they gave me money for that. And uh, also in Indian Institute of uh, Technology in Rookie, at that time it was University of Rookie, I, I taught a course and I was paid because I went for one year, 
half a year Purdue took care and other half I, I had to raise my own money and it was very well sure. I also had money from NSF which is unique it it doesn't have that program anymore and NSF provided all my travel all my five children myself my wife they provided travel money and also uh, uh, sustain quite a bit of money I got sure. from NSF uh, for going to India as a guest scientist and there University Grants Commission in Indian side also paid money, so I had no problem with the money. Yeah, okay. And you do all right. Sure. And, and so, but to tell quickly that uh, transportation area, I changed that to transportation infrastructure systems because we were evolving into more than transportation. We were looking into infrastructure, that water, wastewater. Uh, we had courses. We teach uh, um, um, on uh, urban systems. And so it became more systems engineering, lots of uh, wish to work with industrial engineering people. You know, that's what I know a lot of people in industrial sure. engineering, more optimization, simulation. So our program evolved into transportation infrastructure systems engineering, uh, more than transportation. But right, that is okay. transportation is the main one. And I stepped down from there in 2001 when one of my former students became school head. I didn't want to be an area head. Uh, uh, to um, uh, um, uh, avoid any kind of conflict of interest. And, but then subsequently, this area system was uh, demo, you know, uh, uh, changed to some less than area. It's like a group coordinator type thing we have right now. So that's what it is. Right. But okay. this program is very um, uh, well known in the country. And we always, because of the Joint Transportation Research Program, we can support graduate students, there is a boom or bust that we get a big research grant and we can hire students, then there is a bust. We don't. We have always have a continuous support. Big money comes once in a while. We, we, we can afford but, a but always it's a sustenance level money we have. Right, okay. A couple things on the head. Harold Michael was the head. Was He was not head when you came. Though, was no, he, okay. he was not. John McLaughlin hired me. Right. He was the head. John uh, Harold Harold became a head in after John McLaughlin, 1978, mm -hmm. and he was uh, uh, till 91. He was head, and I took uh, Harold's office, as a matter of fact, and I occupied that office for a long time. Sure. And just um, uh, came to different uh, office recently. Harold was a very good friend, very good mentor, and um, a, he was a, a quiet person. He didn't have too many close friends. Uh, but uh, he was a very compassionate man, and uh, I, I, I admire him, and uh, I have a lot of good memories, and, sure. uh, and I, I try to do things, uh, uh, make sure that we honor him. I set up a uh, lab, laboratory in honor of Harold with the money from Indiana Department of Transportation uh, when I was the director of the program, and they were willing, and they gave uh, quite a bit of money <clears throat> in civil engineering, we have a traffic engineering lab, uh, and um, uh, that's named after Harold Michael. Mm -hmm. And when I tried to do that, then many people objected, <clears throat> and, uh, but I managed to do that. But I always used to chuckle that when I was, uh, Harold was school head, I used to ask Harold for lab. <clears throat> Harold used to say, hey, Sina, you don't need a lab. Your lab is outside. Go stand there and count cards, and uh, you, you go out. You don't need any lab. So after Harold passed away, then we had this lab, and I chuckled. I told in the opening ceremony that Harold uh, must be turning in his grave because I have this lab, uh, but I have brought, uh, all Harold should know, that I have brought the outside inside. So we have a lab. The technology we have we can bring the <coughs> outside conditions inside with the all kinds of technology, with the optic fiber, etc. And uh, uh, we, we hired Darcy Bullock to run that, and he's now the director of the Joint Transportation Research right. Program. Okay, okay. And then he had a couple of hours. <coughs> Teaching and mentoring some. Yeah. When I came, I used to teach quite a bit. At that time, we had lots of, needed a lot of teaching. Uh, but again, Harold, uh, when he became head, or even before he became head, he, I did not, unknown to me, I did not know. Harold told the uh, civil engineering uh, administration that uh, uh, they should not uh, ask me to teach because I was involved so much in research. 
and also graduate student advising. I used to really tackle 12, 14 students, uh, you know, many, many students. And even though some students did not uh, work with me directly, but I used to yep. work with them. So I Council knew and for a long time, I took uh, almost everybody I knew, uh, graduate students in transportation area, even beyond transportation in related areas, in construction and materials. So Harold told that uh, uh, Sina would not teach too many courses. And also, he stopped uh, uh, sending any of the undergraduate advising to me. I haven't advised. You know, if, if somebody doesn't specifically ask, I want Professor Sinha as my advisor, even then they come and check with me whether it's all right with me. Because Harold told that Sinha has so many graduate students, so many other things, we should not burden him with, uh, with things. So I did not know that, I found out. So, so the if I have undergraduate best student, interest. yeah, he he looked after sure. those people, you know, and sure. he, he he was a very good. His philosophy, I still try to follow, that uh, everybody doesn't do everything. So you try to find what is best in in that person and make that person do that. So somebody would teach, somebody would do research, somebody would do. Uh, administrative work, and he uh, engaged people that right. way. Right. It's a blend of the strengths and weaknesses of yes. the individual. And absolutely. You take absolutely. Which so is that's, key. The, that's the way he, he Do you he keep operated. in contact with a lot, a lot of the students, and many of them have gone on, like the one in Egypt? Uh, uh, Harold, uh, by that time, Har Harold, before my time, you know, I really basically made Harold uh, uh, make him obsolete because I did everything. <laughs> and he, uh, all the students ended up with me. And uh, uh, okay. so Harold became administrator, but he he, he had a role to play. He, he 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 encouraged me to do that. He didn't he didn't uh, feel uh, slighted or anything. He he encouraged me to do that, and and, uh, and he told me that as long as I'm willing, uh, he wants me to do that. You know, so I did. And a good rapport with the students. Absolutely, right. Harold had Harold had a lot of loyal students, even today. Yeah, that's nice. Those who are in 60s, uh, 50s and 60s, there are many people that are very loyal to our own. So that's, and I taught courses in uh, many areas. And uh, uh, in fact, I came, I taught initially in, in uh, at Market University, which is a very small school. So all courses in materials, in construction, in traffic engineering, traffic flow theory, the whole spectrum I taught. So I am a generalist. When I came to Purdue, it's a bigger part, so I didn't have to do all those things, like everything. So I specialized initially in uh, urban planning, modeling, systems, engineering, those kind of areas. Initially, I taught uh, one traffic engineering course, so many of the people, you know, which we are good, we are well known for traffic, they mm -hmm. took traffic engineering with me. Then I specialized in planning and uh, modeling uh, you know, systems that the industrial engineering type thing sure. or then uh, gradually I got involved into infrastructure systems which is my forte by the way right now that's the way I kn I'm known in, to the, uh, in my profession now which I blended this modeling and systems analysis type of tools into figuring out uh, the, the hard uh, engineering type of stuff materials and, and construction decision making. So I blended engineering with economics and policy, and that's that's as I said, that's my strength. And and uh, and I started that type of thing towards the in around eighties after I returned from sabbatical. And uh, all the students uh, there, you know, as somebody once told, all the world's road managers are sinners former students. <laughs> Very so, nice. That's uh, nice to hear. I started to do that and I sure. brought um, uh, management. In, when I say management, is more figuring out decision making where we should spend money, what we should maintain, what time we should uh, stop maintaining and build a new uh, structure, that kind of, even today I do that and I have branched out you know, more into financing, and I work with the Indiana legislature, 
some of the work I have done, I feel very, um, I feel good that they are used, not just uh, scientific papers. Yeah. Like Indiana, when you pay tax in the pump, the fuel tax, well, ask the person who uh, organized that uh, for the legislature in 1985. Uh, legislature ask uh, Purdue to do that, uh, and, and I, I did. Or they ask Indiana Department of Transportation. It was also a state statute. And they ask us, so I did a, a major research program to completely uh, uh, overhaul the system, and that was the last time it was done. Uh, and many things we did, with the trucking fees and uh, sure. uh, the fuel tax, diesel tax, I wanted to do something else, but legislature came very close to that. If I had done, it would be a revolutionary at charging weight distance tax, how much weight you carry for how many distance. But the truckers were not in favor, and even then legislature was almost about to pass that, but it didn't work out. Sure. And, and nowhere, I mean, except in Europe, some places, we don't have that kind of system. But that's a revolutionary system. Uh -huh. We have the technology, we can do that, and, and, and uh, we like to do that uh, in, in the country. But uh, so I, I did that. It's still in vogue, uh, it's still in use in Indiana, all the changes I made in 1980s. And then uh, also 1980s, I, have, I did the Indiana Department of Transportation. I helped them to decide how. They had some subsidy for public mass transportation fund Indiana has, subsidies to give to the, all the bus systems like GLPTC, Lafayette, and the rail system we have in northern Indiana. We had, at the time, about 30s. Now it has increased quite a bit. And lots of different kinds of systems. They provide different kinds of service. So they ask us how to distribute this uh, subsidy money we have. So I came up with, uh, uh, again, applying engineering with uh, uh, some skill, you know, analysis and et cetera. And I was surprised. Everybody agreed, you know, which is very difficult to make a large system, small system, medium systems, different kinds of services, and agree on the formula. And I have a formula which is still in use in Indiana to uh, dole out the uh, subsidies. Very which, nice. So, yeah. uh, worthwhile, then. Worthwhile. So yeah, those right. are the two public policy thing that um, I positively I can say they're still in use after 30 years, but there are a lot of other engineering things we have done, sure. changes here, there, in traffic area, in the way practices we do, and, and uh, but they, they, as, as expected, that's done. Right. In, okay. You got quite a few awards. Let's talk about a couple of the James Lowry Prize and the Roy Crum and National Academy of Engineering. Yes, the awards, uh, I have been, again, fortunate that my peers have recognized me my first award I got in 1972, uh, 72, no, 74, or 73, 74 around that time, is a Fred Bargraf Award. That's for the young researchers. Is given by the Transportation Research Board, which is a unit of the National Academy of Sciences, and uh, that's for a paper, best paper award. I got it with a student of mine at Marquette University. And that's a very, very, you know, I, when I got that award, I thought I got Nobel Prize because that's the first time I was recognized for the work I did. And that's basically the extension of my PhD dissertation using digital simulation to design highways. And that work had effect because I did that in Wisconsin. I figured that, that uh, uh, we used to have a lot of ramps at that time. Uh, they are coming on ramp from the left side. And I, I proved by simulation that that was uh, not a good idea, safety issue. And I did experiments with the, how the people turn their heads. And somebody from the medical school helped me the, how the neck turns, etc., and uh, the visibility. And I put that into simulation. And then I proved that it is not a good idea. And in the country, we don't have any more uh, left-hand ramps. So it's all right and ramps, right. on ramps, <laughs> and on or off ramps. So that's, that sure. has been discontinued, and I feel pretty good about that. So that's then I got several other awards. I got uh, uh, um, American Society of Civil Engineers have recognized me over a period of time. Mm -hmm. I gave Fred uh, 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 Turner, Frank Turner lecture, which was very, uh, very prestigious lecture I gave uh, in honor of Frank Turner. 
And then uh, there are several other awards. I became honorary member of American Society of Civil Engineers, which is a singular honor. That's, the, that, that, that's basically the highest honor American Society of Civil Engineers bestows on any member. Uh, the, you know, it's a, when I became, there were only 123 in his 150 year history. Let me take it back. I don't know 123 or not, maybe 250 or so in 150 year history. So it was very, uh, I was very pleased that I was recognized and uh, the uh, honorary membership. And that's the membership they give uh, to the members. And old days used to be not only members, but they also used to give to somebody who is not a member, but very prominent uh, public f official uh, uh, that has done a lot of things for right. civil engineering. And then uh, uh, up until all the way I came and then uh, uh, in 19, uh, 2008 I became National Academy of Engineering member. How which did is you find out that you had been, I sometimes in the, I asked In the people. morning, in the morning uh, uh, I, I heard that, um, uh, that following morning, as a matter of fact, my wife and I, we go to La Scala the, that, that uh, when this, uh, to celebrate, and uh, I saw uh, President Jiski there, and uh, that they, you know, so uh, we, we celebrate uh, even today, in every time <laughs> that, that um, annually we go to La Scala. I was extremely pleased because it's a, it's a very, very, I think it's a big honor. And particularly I felt uh, pleased and um, uh, that uh, I, I, my career has been at Purdue. And Harold Michael was NAE. National Academy oh, member. Right. Yes, oh, that's nice. And and How I, I being Harold's uh, junior colleague, and I I felt very good. Uh, we have um, uh, several people. We have we hired them. They came as a National Academy of Engineering member, but I my career was at Purdue, and so recognized for my work at Purdue. Yeah. So I I felt very good. They have a, the ceremony in Washington. Very very good, very nice ceremony. So. I did not uh, think that I would bring my family, but all the people who are my, <coughs> they became member before me, they all told in uh, uh, the other uh, electrical, mechanical, uh, not mechanical, we don't have anybody, but electrical uh, and uh, industrial engineering, they all told that, oh, oh this, this is a once in lifetime <laughs> opportunity. You bring all your family, they will forever remember. I did, it cost me a lot of money. So I brought all my family, 13 members, to Washington, D.C. to see me being Very inducted. Nice. And it was, it was a, 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 and also my cousin who lives in Washington. So it was, and I also give the same advice to who became member after me. And they all have done that. And, and it has been, it's a, and then subsequently Leah, our dean, uh, organized uh, a reception. Uh, for for that and invite all the other members of the academy from the area, in the Washington area. Well, only one year we we're in uh, um, in California, but now we are back in Washington. And I was very fortunate because um, uh, I, uh, 2008 ceremony took place in the old building, historic building. That's where Einstein's statue is there and the old marble all over. But then right after that, they discontinued because the building was going to be repaired. So for three years, it was not there. But much of the glamor or the, uh, uh, you know, the pomp and uh, circumstances was because of that building. Now you're going back this year, uh, right. it will be in, in, in that. In the hallowed hall. Hallowed halls. There you go. Yeah. So it was very, very nice yeah. and I'm very pleased. I'm active in a lot of, uh, 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 a lot of uh, uh, committees and panels, national panels. I also was asked to serve on the executive committee of Transportation Research Board. And uh, I have worked with Transportation Research Board all my years. You know, as I said, Fred Bargraf award I got in 1973 or 72 or 74, around that time. And then I got the, their highest honor is the uh, the Roy W. Crumb Award, somebody who has um, a lifetime achievement, distinct, distinction in research, uh, not just service, but research. And that's the, I was given that in a very nice ceremony 
but the secretary of U.S. Department of Transportation attended, and uh, I, I spoke briefly, but I told my um, uh, my gratitude to Purdue, and uh, and some people from Purdue who got this award over the years. I mentioned them. K.B. Woods is one, the very first person from Purdue to receive that award, and uh, Harold got that award too, and Ellen Yoder. And, uh, That's very and nice see, that you and, mentioned that. And, that is, and, and yes, a lot of people told me that was very nice. But I did that honestly because I feel very proud. Because when I came to Purdue, when I was a graduate student, I heard of these people's name all the time. K.B. Woods, Harold Michael, Eldon Yoder, and, and Bill Getz. They are the stars in materials, in pavement design, in traffic engineering, in uh, all kinds of other things in the highways area. So I felt that uh, I I have arrived. I'm 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 now uh, uh, you know sort of kept the legacy, and I hope that my colleagues in future will continue. It's a it's a very good satisfaction yes, that I yes. have maintained. And you and you express it very nicely. Yeah. yeah. And the the other one was that James Laurie Prize. will make a comment. Laurie Prize that. is 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 a, a civil engineering American Society of Civil Engineers. I think ASC has run out of awards to give me, so I have got all the ASC transportation related awards. <laughs> we so, have to look out, look at, look further or something, right? Yeah. Well, I, oh, I after I became National Academy member, I told my colleagues that I don't want any more awards and honors. Uh, I, honestly, I don't, and I, I, I'm very humble. I, I'm very proud that what I have, and right. I, I just, uh, you know, I don't want to say they're trinkets, but I, I just don't want another plaque or something to put on my uh, uh, desk or something. So, but James Sorry Pies was the last one, but some, my friends, they wanted to have that award uh, uh, they also wanted. included me into that okay. in the right. list, so I'm very uh, right. proud of that. But uh, in my consulting work, I'll tell you one, my philosophy, I strongly believe that the engineers must do some consulting work to remain in practice. Many of my colleagues don't think that way, but I feel that uh, that's the way you remain connected to the practice. We are not purely scientists. We don't do just to do things. Uh, our pleasure is doing things that is used. So hands, should, more hands-on. Hands-on. We have to know the practical world, practice what is going on. Not all the time you spend in consulting. You don't do everything that the regular consultants will be able to do, but you should do specialized work that other people cannot do. They, do, they need research, they need thinking. And I firmly believe that's the way it should be. We should have some consulting or some practice. And... Uh, no, sabbatical allows that opportunity, but a lot of people don't do sabbatical uh, for whatever reasons. So I did, decided to, I also did a lot of other consulting, but my main consulting that, that I'm very proud of is the World Bank. And I feel that's where I'm making a difference. And World Bank is not a uh, you know, standard organization. Their mission is to alleviate poverty. So all the work they do, infrastructure, the water, transportation, the, the, the wastewater, housing. I did a lot, infrastructure, you know, not just transportation, but also other kinds of things. The whole idea is to make life better. And I, I feel that I have been a small part I played, very, very minute part that I played. But in, every part in, is in, important. Yeah, well, right. uh, hopefully. Sure. And the changes have been made that some of the recommendations that we did and they have been implemented. And the bank has the club because they give money. Right. And if you don't do, we won't give you money, you know. So I work with missions. And the, my latest work, uh, the bank was uh, in India, as a matter of fact. I did uh, in India. And uh, uh, well, I was in India last year, uh, this February, last, this February oh. I was in India. Uh, through the bank, working with their planning commission, the highway, their very high level highway evaluation going on, that or transportation policy, and I prepared the resource papers for the bank, for the uh, that for the Indian planning commission, 
and I feel very good. And and uh, I feel this a small part the changes if that take place in sure. all, all areas. Again, all my work is the interface between policy, economics, and engineering. I bring engineering principles. Uh, engineering way of doing things, you know, the, and then combine that with economics and finance and, and policy and, and then tell what the government policy should be in areas of financing, funding, energy-related areas, uh, in technology, um, in policies regarding trucking. Uh, you know, that's a, it's a policy, trucking industry, but it's the engineering best because the damage the trucks make uh, on the road, you know, the, the, the sure. damage functions, there you have to use engineering to figure out the damage functions. So that's, uh, I have worked in the Middle East, I have worked in China, I have worked in, uh, I'm very active in China, and not just through World Bank, but also other ways, and uh, uh, China, Middle East, uh, in Palestine, I worked there, and uh, uh, in Iran, uh, I did some short period of time, and uh, you know a lot of other Middle Eastern countries, and uh, uh, let's see where else. In Nepal, I did a lot of work in Nepal, a lot of work in Bangladesh, lots of work in Bangladesh, and uh, also I did in Caucasus, in uh, the Southern Caucasus, in Georgia, and uh, I was uh, some uh, involvement I had in uh, uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan, uh, but I I I fell and broke my ankle. So I had to come back, <laughs> but I was in George Tbilisi uh -huh. and, uh, working okay. on those. Yeah. And so you're pretty. You're pretty um, one thing I wanted to ask you: the uh, this is interesting. At the American Society of Civil Engineers, the chairman of the Alfred Nobel Prize Committee. Could, yes. For researchers, could you yeah. make a comment? Uh, on yeah. Yeah. That? That's that's a that, that's a very interesting prize. It's an inter-society prize. Okay. It's the uh, uh, electrical engineers, uh, mechanical. Materials, metals, uh, civil engineering, uh, a whole bunch of societies, they give one hour to a young person. Uh, and young as what, 40 or uh, under? Or? Uh, 35 or young. Okay. And uh, it's given, and it has uh, monetary. It's uh, anywhere between 3000 to $5,000 is given. And uh, it's a very, very, very desirable and coveted prize. And I am the chairman of that, and also we have representatives from the other societies in that committee, and m many of them are National Academy members. But I was appointed by Civil Engineering Society because this uh, trust that was created by this Alfred Nobel, uh, he was an industrialist, he wanted Civil Engineering Society to be the uh, trustee or uh, the owner or somebody right. to look after oversight. So by uh, to their, handle the trust uh, to handle the trust fund. So that's why civil engineering society appoints a chair okay. and looks after. But this award is for all societies. It is uh, it is very good, you know, very good in, because we we have uh, different kinds of papers. All the journals, all the journals published by these societies are paper published and eligible. And so it's a, always a challenge. You're comparing all kinds of different things. And I have been there doing this thing for quite a few years, four it or five years. It sounds like it, that's right, yeah. <laughs> when do they give it, do normally they give the award? The, uh, uh, they At decide, the they give it to the annual meeting for the society from which the ARD comes. Okay. So, so it can be- So it a double E, it would be a double E, I sure. e or mechanical engineers or metals. There is a group called Metals, Materials, and uh, something, you know, three M's. They, they are society, or AASC, and we do not try to put this thing uh, AASC. I'm the only one from AASC, and there are other members there, sure, too. Sure, I understand. <laughs> okay. Um, when you were the, the council, of, this is interesting, the Council of University Transportation Centers president? E yes. I, I, well, I, I was president. In I had 91, the o opportunity that? to do... Right. Uh, leadership in quite a few organizations. Uh, Council of University Transportation Centers is the, all the university transportation centers grouped together in 1970s to form a, uh, a lobby, I wouldn't say lobby, as a, as a group, and uh, uh, to basically they lobbied Congress and then that uh, uh, activity 
created these university transportation centers funded by US DOT. Purdue has the center. And I take a uh, uh, lot of uh, pride that I was the president of the society of this group when we managed to establish that about 20 years ago. And, uh, but for a long time, Purdue did not have, well, we on and off, we have been part of this, that. But this is the first time, a few years ago, uh, we created this, or we managed to get this center taken away. The problem is, it is by region. Our region, Region 5, we have some really big universities. Um, University of Michigan is very active in transportation. Illinois, University of Illinois, Ohio State, Minnesota, Wisconsin, so all these are in this region. So we are fighting among each other. On one time we tried to group together, didn't work. Michigan went by itself, but ultimately we have managed to get it. But when you were preparing the proposal, in the past I, 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 I did myself, but uh, last time we did, the winning team that we did, and at the time I said I'll help to organize and do everything needed to bring other universities together because I know them very well, sure. but we need somebody else to be the, right. the, the, the younger person. So we opened it up to my colleagues, and Srinivas Pita, he uh, stepped up to the plate, so he's the director. Okay, sounds good. Okay. But I'm still involved with sure. the center. Um, your family? Um, um, uh, yeah, I have five children. My wife and I, we, we were married in 1967, and I have five children. And uh, my uh, oldest child, his daughter, she is FBI special agent, and now she's a legal attache for U.S. Embassy in Canada, and we're very proud of her. She's a Purdue graduate, and then uh, she has both undergraduate and master's degrees from Purdue in psychology. And then our second child is also a Purdue graduate. He's a civil engineer, and he works for, he's a hydraulics engineer, not transportation, and he works for a company uh, that is owned by one of my former students, okay. and which, who is a great benefactor of Purdue, Chris Burke. And we are very proud of Chris Burke. So my son work, has been working for Chris uh, for some time, mm -hmm. and uh, that's his only job, has been for uh, quite a few years now. And my third child is a civil engineer, and uh, but she's a uh, she became a lawyer, and uh, we are also very proud of her. She works for uh, U.S. Department of Justice, and uh, in Washington D.C. in uh, uh, Civil Rights Division. And my fourth child, uh, my third child, is not a Purdue graduate, and she is University of Texas Austin graduate, and I have this terrible trouble to explain why she went to Texas Austin, and it's a sort of implied way that as if I have uh, agreed that Texas Austin is better than Purdue. It's a, it's a joke among my peers, but it's a, I, have to exp I have to explain all the time why it happened. She was, I'll quickly take time to tell, she, after high school, she wanted to go to a military academy. She was, uh, appointed, admitted in, the, in Annapolis, which is uh, against her father's, and I agreed ultimately, but I didn't really want her to do that. But then right around that time, the, he, he, after she was admitted in the Annapolis, she was about to go there. That's, that summer, the first Gulf War started, and she started to think about this. And then she came down to the thought that she really did not want to kill people. And then she, what she did, you know, she went to Vista, volunteers in service to America. And that's a, a domestic peace court type thing. You can go there after high school. And uh, so she was uh, uh, in Austin, Texas, working with the, uh, the kids, um, uh, Hispanic kids, those who tried to keep them in school. Sure. And then all of a sudden she called us and said she wanted to go to college. We said, of course, you know. Um, um, so what do you want to do? She said she wanted to be a civil engineer. The reason is I took her one time in Nepal with me, and she thought that civil engineers had a really interesting job. <laughs> and uh, They travel. Uh, uh, yeah, they travel. They do a lot of things in the governments and uh, things. So she, uh, uh, I said, well, then you come to Purdue, the best place. She said, no. She has decided to go to 
Uh, no, she said she want to go to University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. And uh, I said, look, you know, I cannot afford that. But that um, doesn't make sense. Uh, why should I pay so much uh, um, you know, out of state tuition? She said, well, in that case, then I will go to uh, Texas A&M. Now, don't tell anybody. I said, Novina, my daughter's name, do me a favor. If you have to stay in Texas, stay there. But please, if you have to go to Texas, go to Austin, not Texas A&M, please. <laughs> so that's the way she ended up in okay. Texas, Austin. Okay. And, and that's she also, their main can, their main men. Sure. That's a flagship, yeah. and and that's also you know more gentle you know more uh, they have a, uh, <laughs> and, it worked out. <laughs> and and then my fourth child is a Purdue uh, electrical engineer. Uh, she, he graduated with distinction, but uh, he uh, became a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. After uh, finishing at Purdue, he had an you know, option or t thought about whether to go to graduate school at Purdue in electrical engineering or go to medical school, IU, and he was a National Merit Scholar. And, uh, uh, he, but he was not sure whether a medical school, so he had a minor in biology. He also had a minor in philosophy. And uh, he's, he's, uh, we're very proud of him, like all our children, but he's particularly a thoughtful guy. And uh, after he finished, he uh, uh, became assistant professor uh, in medical school in IU, same place. He doesn't, he loves Indiana. He doesn't like to leave Indiana. Sure. So only place he uh, decided to go is a medical school at IU. And he has been there ever since. And uh, also he never went outside for his residency, stayed there. And he's, okay. he's in the faculty there. Okay. And my fifth child went to University of Wisconsin, Madison. I had to pay out of state tuition. Cost me more money than all our children together. And he uh, ended up going to uh, Colorado, and he worked for a food bank. Food bank, <laughs> and very hard work, very little money. But he likes it. But subsidized right. by okay. the parents. Okay. How about a Purdue tradition? Anyone well, uh, uh, the Purdue tradition that I uh, always enjoyed is uh, our civil engineering. We have uh, civil engineering breakfast, where we, the faculty, we cook, and the uh, former students come back, and uh, it's just uh, always a pleasure of seeing some of the people I haven't seen for a long time, and uh, so that's the tradition. And that's I, been going for a long for time, a hasn't long, it? For a long, long time. Good. Long, long time. We also have another tradition, that uh, Purdue tradition, Transportation Research Board I mentioned, that uh, Purdue has been a big part of that uh, organization, uh, uh, and there we used to have Purdue activity, uh, it's a 10,000 people come up from around the world. It's a huge thing in Washington every year in January. And uh, for a year, for year after year, you know, it's to be Purdue breakfast. And then it became Purdue tea. It's really alcohol, but uh, they used to call it tea because uh, they didn't want to tell too many people because it became tea, the crowd. But then when I had opportunity to talk to Harold, started a regular open Purdue night and uh, reception. It is a big tradition, has been now, is about almost 25 years, yeah. and lots of people come there. And, not, and those are nice to have. It, it means so much to the alums, yeah. the older ones, and also the, the ones that are new to yes, the students yes. or whatever. Yes, and yeah. then they come year after, many people come year, year after year. Also, it's a big, you know, there's a lot of uh, benefit side. Sure. Many people come, and then our development people go there, and it's a fertile ground. A lot of older people come and they get uh, involved. In, right, in exactly. <laughs> outstanding event? Um, Any come to mind? Uh, outstanding event that uh, happened. Well, I would say when I became a distinguished professor at Purdue, that was a very, you know, I really, really felt a, a big uh, thing for me and my family. Uh, it, as a matter of fact, even more than, because it just fell on my lap. I never expected. You know, I, I never thought I, I, I'm a big dog. I still don't feel, I'm still, uh, uh, I, I, it's sort of Ensign corny. Pulver down the you know, I just do the thing the that you there do, you but it fell on <laughs> I me. I hear you. And <laughs> so I thought it was, uh, very nice. I was very pleased. And, and very I'm nice. very fortunate and I'm very thankful for uh, the family that uh, endowed and it has given me such an opportunity to do things that I could never imagine I could right, do. Yeah. I can almost do 
uh, any kind of uh, endeavor that I like to do, uh, look and search and, and discover, I can do and also support students and, and not just myself, my colleagues. And right. so that's, that, that's the right. outstanding. And event in closing, an educator's look at transportation engineering. Yeah, transportation engineering. Now I speak, and I, as you can expect, I go around the world, I speak, and right. people always ask me. But right now, recently in India and China, I'm doing more and more. The universities are asking me that uh, in, in not only in transportation, infrastructure, civil engineering, engineering, uh, broader engineering, relevance to the, our quality of life in people around the world. And because of my involvement in the World Bank, they know that they ask, you know, mm -hmm. how we can make this. Uh, and also, it's not people don't have to come to the campus. They, you know, we have become, uh, the, the technological revolution has made it such a, uh, opportunity to do things, you know, we can be anywhere. Uh, you know, by the way, I did uh, for a long time, I was advisor for Singapore, National University of Singapore. Mm. A lot of changes took place in Singapore, and I take some small pleasure that I was uh, involved in, in that. Involved right. in that. Uh -huh. Singapore, Hong Kong, I'm still their advisor, Hong Kong University, Polytechnic University, in China, several universities. And I'm going to China in May, going back. I go there quite often. This will be my 16th time. I'm going to Southeast University in Nanjing. Well, what I tell them that uh, many of the things we did in the earlier days, that uh, very engineering ways of doing, uh, uh, designing highways, etc., they have become passe, that you don't really spend all this time to figure out. Now we are we are the we have to in my field in transportation, the how we can combine environmental aspects, the bigger challenges of uh, climate change, energy use, economics, where the money comes from, combined with engineering, that's the challenge. Also with the technology, electrical engineering. So it's not narrow backgrounds of civil engineering. We used to do supply side. We used to do the how to supply, how to build uh, roads and bridges, how to make them good job. But it's not sufficient. We also have to ask ourselves: the things we are building are they sustainable over a period of time? Sustainable, with the ecologically, environmentally, and also financially, and in the context of the society we are building. You know, I was involved in some of the things in, in the World Bank, uh, asking similar kind of questions, uh, uh, building a, a bridge in, in Bangladesh and remote, remote part villages, what it will do to the society, how it will transform, how they will respond, and uh, what kind of access we are providing for healthcare and education and empowering poor and, and women. And those are the issues we'll have to make our, our uh, uh, students aware of that, much larger than just much designing, and glo and it's much global, global right. aspect. Right. So that's what we are trying right. to do. I teach a seminar course at, at Purdue, I started a few years ago, where I bring uh, not only uh, people from Purdue and also from people from outside. For example, last year I had uh, Gavisa, uh, who is our World Food Prize winner. You know, he was a con my contemporary of my students. Yeah, so I knew him as a stu when he was a student here in 1970s. He used to live with some of my former students, so I had connection with him. And Gavisa was very busy, so I wrote to him. I said, I want you to come and tell my st seminar class, give a seminar, because I think transportation and fu global food security is very well connected. And uh, without transportation, you know, global, he does a lot of global food security. Right. And I think it's uh, intricately connected because lots of the food get wasted, the grains get wasted because they get transport and, and the distribution logistics. And, and that issue is, is the, that can be highlighted. So I want my students to hear from you. So he came. Well, first he said, and he's very busy, but then he said, but, uh, when you asked me to do this thing, I think it is important, I better do it. <laughs> so he said, I will come and do that. So he came, I appreciate it. A lot of other people from Purdue in ag economics, those who are working in, in, in the area of coal engineer, 
coal uh, energy, etc. I had from Purdue. I also brought some people from outside to come and speak about um, issues of related that to transportation. That enriches the class so much and yes. enriches the, the students. The students love it. You right. know, love oh, yeah. it because they hear something different. Also, I don't do one hour thing. I do, I, I say to myself or the student, we need more time. It's not just somebody comes and talks and, and by the time the talk is over, there is no time to interact. So I, I do everything two hours. Two hours, so one hour you, the person talks and another hour we, we back and forth and we That's we as talk. important as listening to the lecture. Yes. It's the interaction. Oh, you know, absolutely. Right. absolutely. I love to do that. So I was in India in February. I went through many universities. In one university, president of the university came to listen to me. And he was so impressed and uh, that uh, you know they asked me to serve as their advisor you know to, to, because I just don't talk about transportation, although that's my area. Right. I talk about infrastructure from infrastructure, I go to the larger theme of quality of life. You asked me about my students, and the students, when they come or over the period, I used to tell them, they look, I'm here not to teach you. The, the nuts and bolts. I'm here to guide you that will stay with you rest of your life. I want to be your friend. So I hope you learn from my experiences. What I have to offer, you want to learn more math, more engineering, there are my colleagues I have, you should go to them. Because I tell you, I don't know most recent things, but I can give you wisdom. If you want that, that I am here to give you. And I can tell you the pitfalls, where the danger things are, and I can avoid. And it has worked out very well. And the people so. that the students, uh, and also my philosophy has been, when a student comes to Purdue, the, I am the person who is a graduate student, channeling him, but that student should take advantage of all the good things we have at Purdue. In transportation area, all my colleagues, civil engineering, any engineering, and outside. So I always tell them, you work with others and pick out, just like a, a swan picks out the cream from a pat of water. You go around and, and listen to people and get ideas. And I don't have any any claim on you that you just have to work with me. I want you to be confident when you leave this place that you know the subject. And that's my greatest reward, that you feel confident that you're going. You never have to write a paper with me. You never, you, you do, you know, you, you are your person when you leave this place. <laughs> so in fact, there is a person who did very well in Singapore, very well known in Singapore. He used to write papers and is to put my na name in the paper, he used to say, I got this idea from you. I said, no, 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 you stop doing that. Don't, I don't want it anymore. <laughs> you are on your own. You, you work with your student. <laughs> Please, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, keep writing. Right. But, so he is very well known now. Right. No, uh, uh, he became head of the uh, civil engineering school and he's doing all kinds of great things. I'm very proud of him, uh, Tian Feng Fua. Yeah, and that's well, that's what you take away from from your life and what your contributions oh, have been. Yeah, well, and I think um, that uh, this interview has been very informative. I well, have really, really enjoyed well, it. Well, thank My you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs>